is ABC 15 Arizona at 6. Right now at 6, power outages, a shelter in place for neighbors, and large black plumes of smoke filling the skies and could be seen all across the valley this afternoon after this industrial yard caught fire and quickly spread all throughout the property. It's all taking place near 27th Avenue and Buckeye. Our crews bringing you live team coverage since this started around 3. ABC 15 anchor Javier Soto joins us live tonight from the scene. Javier? Katie, the good news we're just hearing from Phoenix Fire right now is they do have this under control. In fact, they're breaking down some trucks right now. Now, what we know is at the height of this fire, there were upwards of 100 firefighters fighting this thing from agencies all across the valley. Right now, I want to bring in Captain uh, Kim Quick Ragsdale with the Phoenix Fire Department. Uh, you said that first and foremost, we want to make sure that our firefighters are okay. Two were injured. Yes, that's correct. We had one overcome by heat, and then we we also had one that uh, sustained a soft tissue injury during the blaze. What do we know about the fire itself? So the fire went fourth alarm. So we had resources from Phoenix and surrounding cities here. We were layering our resources and command made that decision pretty early due to the heat and due to the size of the fire. So we were trying to get enough resources here to rehab and recycle our crews, meaning that the crews that were working hard during this heat were asking a lot of them. It's hot. Um, if they got if they get overcome by heat, they can be pulled out of the fire and a new crew go in. That crew that came out will be uh, have their vital signs taken. They'll be able to get hydration and take a rest. Earlier, we heard it started as a brush fire. Do we know how? We had initial reports that it did start in some brush and, and maybe it uh, got into a fence line and then ran from there. However, the cause is still under investigation and we do not know exactly at this time how or why it started. We're hearing rumors and reports that there might have been a grass or brush fire in that same area earlier today. Can you confirm that? At this time, I cannot confirm that. We do have uh, a little bit of brush in that area. We do have mi mixed industrial in that area. Um, so it is possible, but I cannot confirm at this time. There were some structures lost. Yes, unfortunately, there were some structures lost. We had some mobile homes. Uh, we also had some commercial structures and then possibly one home. You talked about the heat. It was 110 degrees out here. We're going on 30 plus days of that heat. How are you guys able to continue to do this day in and day out? So our Phoenix firefighters are extremely fit. We're, we get acclimated to the heat. We train for this. And like I said before, command made the decision to go to fourth, uh, first, second, third, and fourth alarm to get the layered resources here on scene uh, to help combat the heat. Uh, how long will this area be closed up? That's hard to say. We will be working into the evening to put out hot spots and fire in any concealed area. Um, so it will probably be several hours before all the roads are open and this area is open again. Hey, Captain, we thank you very much. We send our best to the Phoenix firefighters, especially those who were injured in this blaze. Uh, we've been out here and as I mentioned earlier, uh, saw this in Avondale, huge plume of black smoke at about three o'clock. And luckily it's died down since then, but we know uh, this was a wind-driven fire at one point. For that, we want to turn to our investigator, Nicole Grigg. Nicole. Hi, Javier. You know, when we were out here earlier, my hair was just whipping around. Uh, we will be waiting to find out now if the wind played a role on moving that fire from the brush over to this industrial area. We know that the winds, uh, the wind gusts peaked around 20 to 25 miles per hour around that time frame, and they're going to continue to die out as we head towards sunset. I want to show you the scene here. You were talking about the fire trucks breaking down and we can see that happening right from our vantage point. So this is kind of that northwest side of the fire. You can see firefighters trying to clean up, reload up their fire truck. Uh, 100 firefighters were out here at one point today. Also, people who live near here lost power today. A couple dozen people and I kind of just want to show you what this looks like. There are a lot of power lines in this area and we're told that that several of those were also burned and impacted. So we're waiting for APS to give us an update on when they plan to have the power up and running back into this area. And this area, as you mentioned, Javi, is um, an industrial area. A lot of places kind of like with this car parts right here where people can kind of go through, uh, uh, see what type of parts are out here and go through. There's tires, there's propane tanks, uh, vehicles, so a lot 
lot of that was um, extremely, extremely dangerous to our firefighters. Again, uh, they have a handle of this fire. Uh, Captain Rob McDade did tell us that they will have to keep an eye on this to make sure that it does not reignite anywhere. Javier? Especially in this heat, you're exactly right. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, now, as she mentioned, there, this is an industrial area, so we have a lot of businesses in this area. A lot of people witness to this fire. For that perspective and angle, we want to turn to our Jordan Bonke. I know you've been speaking with a lot of people out this afternoon. What are you hearing? There were dozens of people out here when we arrived. It looked like an action movie with all that black smoke just billowing into the sky. There's businesses around the area. Those were saved wholly in part to the Phoenix Fire Department. And luckily for the Phoenix Fire Department, there's good community members like the property that we're standing on here. This is the property of a man by the name of Angel. And he's an angel today because he provided this fan, this mister. There he is over there. He got a phone call from his wife earlier today saying, hey, there's a huge fire and it is right in our beautiful front yard. Let's go take a look at what that looks like right now. Through this fence, this is what cuts off from a buzzsaw here. I'm gonna walk across the street. Just a half hour ago, there were Phoenix firefighters that were out here. Uh, they have completely gone. Uh, if it wasn't for all this charred matter, the police tape, and these, you know, puddles that are standing in the curbs. You may have never known that there was a scene, but once you look a little further, you can see some of the puddles that are inside there right now. Uh, again, this is completely under control for something that happened uh, just a couple of hours ago. I shouldn't say completely under control because there's still going to be uh, some folks and firefighters that are going to be out here on site for uh, the next couple of hours. But when we talk about helping in a moment of crisis like this, that's what Angel did. Here's a little bit from what he said earlier. I work outside all day. Yeah. And honestly, it's really bad working outside on the heat. Oh, you're, you're you telling know? Noah about the flood, yeah, brother. It yeah. is really bad outside. Yeah. And these guys know it even worse, right? Yes, yes, yes. So I I know how it feels. Yeah. So yeah. I'm here to support them if I can, if I have the staff. Our thoughts are with those two uh, firefighters who are injured. If you see a firefighter out in your community, uh, buy them an ice cold something because uh, they're going to need it. This is triple digit heat. They're wearing 50 pounds of gear and for a, uh, they were able to save some homes and some businesses today for an enormous fire that happened, but just 30 feet from where I'm standing. Uh, I'm Javier. I'm going to send it back to you. Jordan Bonke, ABC 15, Arizona. Talk about the community jumping in to help. Uh, one of the things that Phoenix Fire encountered, they told us live ammunition, and that falls in line with some reports of explosions going on right in the middle of that fire. So we're going to stay on scene. We'll continue to gather information. And Katie, we'll see you back here in about another half hour. Send it back to you. All right, Javier, thank you.